All right, so today we're going to do science, and let's look at our science assignment before we start to do science. Read Chapter 3, Lesson 3, page 62 through 67. Do number 1, number 2, and number 3 on page 67. Here are the steps to complete the assignment. Look at the question first. Read through the questions and try to pick out some key words. Begin to read the, ch read the chapter and pay attention to the reading to see if you can find an answer to each question. Write down the answer to the questions. Connect what you learned by creating slash displaying or showing how it relates to you. All right, so easy enough. All right, so the first step is to read the questions first. So I already flipped to page 67. I'm going to focus on just the questions, and I rewrote them so we could see them a little bit better. Number one, why is each individual produced by sexual reproduction? Number two, what are some advantages of asexual reproduction? And number three, some species such as sponges can reproduce both sexually and asexually. Write a paragraph that explains how being able to reproduce both ways might help these species' survival. Use the terms... DNA, traits, and environment. All right, so we read through each question. Now we're going to try to find some key words. All right, sexual reproduction being unique. That's important. That's like the whole number one. Why is Why are people or things that are produced by sexual reproduction, why are they unique? So that's the first one. That's what we're looking for. And the second one, we're looking for the advantages of asexual reproduction or the benefits of it. Why is it good? All right, and we're looking for sexually and asexually here. And then we're going to have to write a paragraph we know in sixth grade that is six to eight sentences. Um, we want that paragraph to be about reproduction. Reproduction both ways, so asexually and sexually. And how does that help that species survive? You must use DNA, traits, and environment. All right, so now that we've looked at our questions first, we're going to go ahead and we're going to start reading the section and see, and we're going to take notes because we know what we're looking for now. What is sexual reproduction? I'm going to put my notes to the side, and as we read it, I might take some notes. During sexual reproduction, organisms get genes from two different parents. When that happens, the organism shares some traits with each parent. Reproduction by two parents. You know that asexual reproduction results in two cells with the same DNA as the parent cell. So that's important. That's, that's review, but I might need that for later. Um, have you ever seen a mother cat and her kitten? You probably noticed that the kitten didn't look exactly like its mother. That is because cats produce offspring by sexual reproduction or reproduction by two parents. So that's important. We know that sexual reproduction is reproducing with two parents. The kitten gets half its DNA from one parent and half from the other. How does that work? Living things that reproduce sexually have special cells called sex cells. The sex cells of the female parent are called egg cells. The sex cells of the male parent are called sperm cells. That's pretty important. Sex cells have only half as many chromosomes as other cells in the organism's body. That's really important, too. For example, the body cells of a house cat each have 38 chromosomes, but a cat's sex cells each have only 19 chromosomes. Sex cells form by a process called my meiosis. In meiosis, one cell divides into four new cells. Each new cell has only half the number of chromosomes as the parent cell. That's pretty important. Study the diagram on the next page to see how, that, how this happens. During sexual reproduction, the male cell and the female cell join in a process called fertilization. During fertilization, an egg and a sperm cell unite to form a new cell. This cell is called a zygote. The zygote is the first cell of a new organism. Since, 
Since each sex cell has only half the usual number of chromosomes, the new organism receives a complete set. The zygote will divide by mitosis to form the many cells that make up the adult body of the organism. So, in summary, um, the zygote has the complete set of the chromosome from the two halves, and it divides by mitosis to form many cells that make up the body. So, asexual reproduction is when um, a plant or organism can reproduce on its own. It doesn't need, there doesn't need to be two people. It has the exact same DNA. There, it is just like cloning. Sexual reproduction is when there are two parents. So there's a mom and a dad. Um, the sex cells are the egg cell in the female and the sperm cell in the male. Um, this is really interesting. Sex cells have half as many chromosomes in, um, as any other like chromosomes in your body. This is because your sex cells are used to form a new baby. So if a mom and a dad have a baby, their baby has half of the cell, half of its cells come from its mom and half from their dad. So the chromosomes have to work together and when they come together they form a zygote and that's when the chromosomes have two complete halves. Does that make sense? I hope it does. On the next page, it kind of explains that a little bit more. So they have a diagram for how it works for mitosis. Um, before mitosis begins, the parent cell makes copies of its chromosomes. The membrane around the nucleus disappears and twin chromosomes become visible. Pairs of twin chromosomes line up in the middle of the cell. The pairs move apart. A membrane forms around each group of chromosomes. The cell divides in two. Each has a full set of chromosomes. Twin chromosomes line up in the middle of the cell. They split, and the single chromosomes move to opposite sides of the cell. A membrane forms around each set of chromosomes. And finally, the cell divides in two. The cells that result are sex cells. They have only half as many chromosomes as the original cell. So here's a little like video of that happening with these two cells. It's not a complete video but just how they're splitting and then they split again. So my notes on this page are the parents copy their chromosomes, membrane disappears and twin chromosomes can be seen, the twin chromosomes go to middle and move apart, new, brain, new membrane forms around the two chromosome groups, cells divide in two, both have sets of chromosomes, twin chromosomes line up and single chromosomes move to the opposite sides, new brain new membrane forms around sets of chromosomes and then the cell divides in two. Those two new cells are sex cells. The sex cells only have half as many chromosomes as the original cell. So the original cell is splitting and that is why at the end there's only half as many chromosomes. All right, we are now on page 64, fertilization in seed plants. So here are my notes as we read. Red, blue, yellow, pink. These are just a few of the many colors that flowers come in. They come in a seemingly endless variety of shapes and sizes too. Why do flowers have so much variety? A flower is an adaptation that allows a plant to reproduce sexually. In flowering plants, fertilization takes place within the flower. The male sex cell of flowering plants are in pollen. Are in are in pollen, the powdery substance found on many flowers. Pollen is produced by the flower's stamen. The female egg is produced at the bottom of the female part of the flower, the pistil. For a flowering plant to reproduce, pollen must get from a stamen to a pistil. This process is called pollination. Look at the diagram to see how pollen gets from the top of the pistil to the egg of the flower. A plant's flower is adapted for the way that pollination occurs. For example, some plants depend on insects to transfer pollen from a stamen to a pistil, either on the same plant or on different plants. These kinds of plants have flower adaptations that attract insects. The adaptations might be brightly colored petals or strong fragrances that appeal to insects. When an insect visits a plant, pollen can rub off on the insect and be carried to other flowers. Birds and mammals can carry pollen too. Plants that depend on wind, water, or other sources to carry pollen 
would have different flower adaptations. So here are my notes on that section. Male sex cell equals pollen. Female sex cell is the pistil. Um, pollen and pistil must come together because that is their two sex cells. Plants adapt to how pollination occurs. So if pollination depends on an insect carrying the pollen from plant to plant, then that plant is going to have a sweet smell or a pretty color to attract insects. And then the flowers adapt to the wind, the water, and other sources of pollination to get pollinated. They will adapt to make sure that they are pollinated. So here is the diagram in the book. I blew it up, and I'm, I'm going to show you a little demonstration of how pollination occurs. So the yellow dot is pollen, and it has to get from the pistol, from the pistol all the way down to the egg. So it moves, it lands, and it starts to go down, and it gets all the way down to the egg, and then once that egg is fertilized, it produces a seed, and then that flower has reproduced. All right, we're on the next page. We're on fertilization in animals, and these are this is our note page. When animals reproduce sexually, they too must join a sperm cell and an egg cell. Fertilization can take place inside or outside of the body of a female. Many animals that live in or near water use fertilization that takes place outside the female's body. This type of fertilization is called external fertilization. During external fertilization, animals release sperm and egg into the water. The sperm swim to the eggs, and fertilization takes place. Each time a sperm and egg unite, a zygote forms and a new individual starts to develop. A zygote is the new developing baby of that organism. The staghorn coral shown in the picture are animals that use external fertilization. They live in the waters around the Florida Keys, the Bahamas, the Caribbean islands, and other areas in the world. In August or September of each year, they release sperm and eggs into the water at the same time. Billions of sperm and eggs can be released at one time. Animals like the staghorn coral that use external fertilization usually produce large numbers of sperm and eggs. But only a few of the fertilized eggs will survive to become adults. Many will die because of environmental conditions such as severe weather or pollution. Others will be eaten by predators. External fertilization would be difficult for land animals because the sperm and eggs would dry out too quickly. For most species of animals that live on land, fertilization takes place inside the female's body. Fertilized eggs also need moisture. In some animals, the zygote develops in the female's body where it is moist. Other animals, such as birds and turtles, have eggs with shells that protect the animals developing within the egg from drying out. The shells also provide protection from other damage. And I just included a picture of sperm cells swimming to an egg cell. So to go over this section to help you understand, um, fertilization can be inside or outside of the body. It depends on the species. So um, Animals who have an egg cell and a sperm cell to reproduce, they either need to be able to produce it in the water for external fertilization to keep the zygote moist. It needs to be protected so that it doesn't dry out. That's why most of the time, like humans, a woman carries a baby. The zygote is inside of the woman. Otherwise, it would not be able to survive. It would dry out. So most animals, um, it can be carried in the female, or some animals produce eggs, like chicken eggs, um, and that protects the zygote. All right, let's move on to the next section. Individuals differ. Unlike individuals produced by asexual reproduction, offspring produced by sexual reproduction share characteristics of both parents. Each individual has its own set of traits. The individuals may look very similar to their parents, but each has a unique set of DNA. 
Meiosis is the reason. Recall that when male and female sex cells form by meiosis, each cell receives half the DNA that is found in other cells of the individual's body. During fertilization, the sperm cell and egg cell unite, and the DNA of the two cells combine. The zygote that forms has a combination of DNA from the mother and the father. For example, the puppies in the pictures have the same mother and father. How many differences can you see among the four puppies? Each puppy is unique because each formed from the combination of a different sperm and egg. That means that each puppy inherited a different combination of DNA. Those different combinations give the puppies different characteristics. So for individuals, individuals differing, um, this is when if you have a mom and a dad, you are able to... When you're born, you don't look like just one of them. You are a mixture of both. You might have the same eye color as your dad, but the same ear shape as your mom. Or you might get a combination. If you have parents with two different skin colors, your skin is going to mix. Those two colors are going to mix together, and you're going to be born with a mixed color of your two parents. So... If you look at this picture of the mom, the dad, and the baby, you can see that the baby has dark hair like its father and a similar nose to its mom. And you might be able to spot some other differences. Um, it looks like the baby is a little bit lighter complected like its father. Um, the hair is smooth like its mother. Its father has kind of wavy hair. So if you just look at those things, that's what they mean by individuals differ. You might have some of the same characteristics because you get half of your DNA from your mom and the other half from your dad, but you are essentially a mixture of both. All right, we're on to the next section, comparing sexual and asexual reproduction. So we are going to take notes on both as we read to be able to compare at the end. You might wonder which type of reproduction is better. Sexual or asexual? The answer is that each type has both advantages and disadvantages. Asexual reproduction is the simpler form of reproduction. It often can occur, occur very quickly, producing many offspring in a short time. And one lone organism can reproduce even if the closest individual of its species is hundreds of kilometers away. Asexual reproduction takes less energy than sexual reproduction. The reason is that in asexual reproduction, organisms do not have to use energy to make sex cells. This can be an advantage when energy supplying food is scarce. Because all organisms produced by asexual reproduction have the same DNA as the parent cell, their survival in an environment may be threatened if conditions change. Think about a group of amoebas living in a pond. Suppose most of the amoebas are offspring of the same parent amoeba. Those amoebas will have identical DNA and, therefore, the same traits. The traits enable them to survive in the environment. What would happen if the water the amoebas lived in suddenly became warmer? Since the amoebas are alike, all can only live within a similar temperature range. If the water becomes warmer than that range, all the amoebas would probably die. So that is a big disadvantage. Now think about another group of organisms living in the same environment. The difference is that those individuals resulted from sexual reproduc reproduction. Each individual has traits that are slightly different from those of other individuals. Some may be able to survive in water that is a little warmer or a little cooler. When a temperature change happens, some individuals have a better chance to survive and reproduce. They will be able to pass on this trait to their offspring who also will be able to live in the warmer water. In other words, individuals who have traits that make them most suited to the environment survive to pass the traits on to offspring. So this, this is the difference between asexual reproduction and sexual reproduction, like their advantages and disadvantages. So again, asexual, it's simple, quick, produces many offspring in a short amount of time. One lone individual can reproduce. It doesn't need to be, there isn't two people, it's just one. Um, takes less energy to reproduce this way, and all individuals have the same DNA, but that can be harmful if the environment changes. And sexual reproduction, there are two parents, 
Um, everybody's a little bit different. It uses, it takes energy to reproduce. Um, some traits will pass on to the young to help them to be able to adapt to the change in the environment. And the last one is slower process to reproduce this way. So now it's time to discuss our homework. So let's look at the questions again. Why is each individual produced by sexual reproduction unique? Hint, it has to do with um, meiosis. Explain what happens, please. Think about sexual reproduction and what makes people unique. Think about if you have a mom and a dad. Do you look just like your mom? Do you look just like your dad? Are you a combination? And tell me why. Number two, what are some advantages of asexual reproduction? We just created a chart to compare the two types of reproduction, so definitely you can use that to help you. And number three, some species such as sponges can reproduce both sexually and asexually. Write a paragraph that explains how being able to reproduce both ways might help these species' survival. Use the term DNA, traits, and environment. Think about the pros and cons of sexual and asexual reproduction to help you answer this, okay? And then lastly, I want you to create a picture, a story, a presentation, or somehow, some other something to connect this to your life. You can create a keynote tutorial on what you learned, and I will post it on YouTube for you. So I want you to think about sexual and asexual reproduction. How does this connect to you? Do you have a dog that just had puppies? Um, do you have a bunch of little brothers and sisters, and do you all look identical? Maybe you have um, a twin. Does this connect to you? So that is your homework. Get started.